good Sunday morning, everyone. Welcome to the county seat. I'm Terry Wood in for Chad Booth today. The Wasatch Mountain Accord. You probably heard those words. It's something that's going to be very important to everyone who lives on either side of the Wasatch Mountains and the entire state of Utah, as a matter of fact. Parts of it are controversial. Parts of it are misunderstood. Today in the program, we're going to examine what is and what is not the Mountain Accord. We'll meet a panel of experts involved with the Mountain Accord. But first, let's hear from Derek Dowsett, who's going to show us what Mountain Accord is all about. Mount Olympus, it's a landmark here along the Wasatch Front. And while it's not the highest peak in the range, it is probably the most recognizable. And it's a popular place to go hiking or sightseeing as are many of the peaks and canyons here along the Salt Lake Valley. But what happens as the population grows here in the Salt Lake Valley? It will have an impact on these peaks. What's it gonna do to our watersheds, our favorite places to visit, and our ski resorts? Well, community leaders are plotting a course. The Mountain Accord is a multi-phase initiative that seeks to create a blueprint for the future of the central Wasatch Mountains and canyons. From Parley's on the north to Little Cottonwood Canyon on the south, this area stretches from the foothills of Sandy and Draper all the way over the mountain to Park City, encompassing seven Utah ski resorts and the Olympic Park. So why create a plan for the central Wasatch Mountains? During the peak of the season, about 50,000 people are on these trails daily. And with the population of the Salt Lake Valley expected to grow by half a million people by 2040, it can only be assumed that more people will be heading up to these mountains over the next 30 years. The Mountain Accord has involved about 200 stakeholders, including conservation groups, the ski industry, local governments, and the public who are all looking at these upcoming challenges and proposing solutions. There are basically four planning goals that the Mountain Accord is focusing on. The environment, transportation, recreation, and overall economic impact. The environmental concerns focus on how to better preserve the areas within the Mountain Accord and to protect the watershed for surrounding communities. No one wants to see these resources of water and beauty loved to death, as it were. Transportation is the next concern. If you've been up the canyon lately, you've probably noticed the congestion. Current infrastructure is reaching its capacity. Mountain Accord proposes different traffic options ranging from light rail access to full public transit routes. Recreation is a big topic of conversation up the canyon. After all, that is what is drawing people there in the first place. The Accord is presenting ideas on what can be done to expand recreational opportunities in the mountains and canyons while still maintaining the experience that has been enjoyed for decades. Economically, with more people comes more opportunities for business and communities on the doorstep of the Wasatch Range. Reaching the proper balance between the environment and promoting increased public access could be an enormous benefit for the economy of the entire Salt Lake Valley. Over the next few years, as these goals are weighed and ideas presented, plans will take shape, and that will plot the course for the future of our everlasting hills. When it comes to land use, it's good to have a plan, because it's hard to know where you're headed if you don't have a map of where you're going. For the county seat, I'm Derek Dowsett. Well, thank you very much, Derek. When we come back, we're going to meet people involved in the actual process of Mount McCord. Remember those good old days? The places you went with your family when you were young? Reinvest in those old memories by making new ones. Beaver County is the perfect place to start that new tradition. Enjoy your favorite pastimes with family and friends. Connect with the history and culture of Utah in a place that's looking to the future. Modern conveniences minus the hustle and bustle of other locales. Beaver County, your adventure starts here.
We all assume that the food we eat is safe, but how do you know? Well, it starts on the farm and continues every step of the way to your local grocery store. So when you bring home food, you do so with the peace of mind that it's safe, fresh, and nutritious, thanks to the Utah Department of Agriculture and Food, the guardians of Utah's food supply and sustainable agriculture. Learn more by visiting ag.utah.gov. There are a couple great things about the Innovation. One is it's still small, it's a community. That makes you feel like when you go somewhere, you know everybody. When you know your neighbor, and your neighbor knows you, and you can trust each other, people look out for one another. I grew up in the Uinta Basin, and I think that it's a good place to raise a family. So we packed up our three kids, and here we came to Uinta County, and what a great place it was. It's not too big, it's not too small. And, and it has a lot to offer that you just don't get in the big city anymore. Welcome back everyone. Let me introduce our panel now. We're going to find out all we need to know about Mountain Accord today. Uh, sitting right to my left here is Lainey Jones, who is the program manager for Mountain Accord. Thank you for joining us today, Lainey. You've got quite a big job ahead of you. Chris Robinson, who is a Summit County Councilman, and he's also the vice chair with Mountain Accord Executive Committee, so you've been involved in this project a lot. And next to him is Brad Peterson. Brad is the director of the Utah Office of Outdoor Recreation, which plays a big part in the Mountain Accord too. So thank you all for coming today. And Lainey, let's start with you. We saw in our story a few minutes ago that there's four prime areas of focus and concern with Mountain Accord, areas that are important to the public too, but perhaps you can give us a brief explanation of why each one of those areas. You bet. We, uh, we started about a year and a half ago and when the executive board formed, the executive board said there's four areas that we need to be focused on. The environment, recreation, the economy, and transportation. And so as we were getting more and more people involved on the Mountain Accord, that was verified. Those really are the big four issues that we need to be grappling with. So for the environment, our goal is that we protect the watershed. As you know, there's so over, over a half a million people in the Salt Lake Valley that rely on the water that come out of the mountains. Park City and Summit County also get a lot of their water out of the mine tunnels. Uh, recreation, I don't think I need to tell the listeners how important that is. I mean, there's a wide range of recreation activities that we enjoy in the mountains and uh, ranging from very dispersed wild experiences to very um, social experience at, at the ski mm -hmm. resorts. And it's really important that we preserve that diversity of experiences mm -hmm. into the future. Uh, our economy relies on these mountains, not only because of the ski resort and tourism economy, but there's a lot of businesses that come and locate in the Salt Lake Valley mm -hmm. and in Park City because of the access to the mountains for their employees. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then last, we have a growing population. We have got more and more people in the future that are gonna wanna access the mountains. And so transportation is a key issue. It's a, it's a tool that we use to achieve other objectives. And you know, one of our big objectives is, is access to recreation. And the population growth in the future and, and more and more people accessing the mountains is one reason for the entire Mountain Accord, isn't it? It's foundational to the, the whole reason we got started. You know, we've got a, about a million uh, people that live around the mountains right now. And by 2040, we think that's gonna grow by another half a million people. So whatever problems and issues we see out there today, they're gonna be exacerbated in the future. And this asset is too important not to plan ahead. Long range plan, it's, it, it's good thinking out of the box in many ways. Uh, Chris, you've, um, you're not only on the executive committee, but you represent Summit County's interest in this. And it seems Summit County has an interest in recreation and business that are kind of wrapped up there together. I mean, the ski industry is so important in Summit County and the related businesses that come off of it. What, what is your prime focus here with Mountain Accord? What do you want to see get done? Well, I think that, <clears throat> as you said, that we have a resort economy and we are a big draw. We, we, we're an engine for the rest of the state and not just skiing. We have Sundance, we have a four season economy. But what we're finding is that we're somewhat a victim of our own success. Uh, because w we are experiencing the same growth pains that Laney explained that are coming, they're already there, and how do we maintain this 
situation where we have a lot of people coming to visit our, our, our region, our, the Snyderville Basin. How do we keep growing that tourism base without killing the golden goose? How do we do it without destroying our quality of life, without destroying our environment, without destroying our air quality? How do we move more people in and out and yet and do it in a, in a sustainable way? And so these four areas are the same ones that we're concerned about. You know, we want, it, we want more recreation, but we don't want it at the expense of the economy. We don't want the expense of our water quality. We don't want to have so many people there that uh, our quality of life, the reason that we, the locals want to live there and why people want to visit there, that we, we don't want to take away from that. So these, these things cross cut the same goals that we have as a county. Do you, do you find Summit County sometimes in competition with Salt Lake County as opposing interests in developing these uh, ideas and these plans, or are you actually meshing together? Well, that's a good question, Terry, because some people subscribe to the theory that if Mountain Accord, if, if its blueprint is executed properly, it will be a high tide that will lift all boats, and it won't be a zero-sum game. Others are of the opinion that, that you know, if we connect this region economically and with the transportation network, that it will actually, it will, will have some shrinkage or bleed off. I, I tend to subscribe to the former uh, philosophy that if, if it's done right, there'll be plenty of business for everybody. But, but there is, you know, this is not a, a simple thing when you get a lot of competing interests together. And, and the trick is that, is finding that grand bargain where it works for everybody, where it's a win-win for everyone. And, and that's gonna be our challenge and that'll be our success if, we, if we're lucky enough to achieve it. But it's, it's not without its detractors. And, and I, I can imagine the same way with recreation, Brad. I mean, you're the uh, state director of outdoor recreation, but that's not just the ski resorts, is it? No, exactly. The, you know, the Wasatch Front's a unique natural asset. I mean, when you can really mountain bike, from the, uh, from the Utah Valley side up and over into the Wasatch back in two and a half hours. Um, the amount of activity that's going on there between mountain biking, climbing, hiking, skiing, backcountry skiing, fly fishing, you know, you name it. I mean, it's a recreational asset unlike anywhere else in the country. And I think one of the challenges that we ha we're up against is it being loved to death, mm -hmm. right? And, and you see what happens in other parts of the state where um, recreational assets become so vibrant and so used that you have to turn around and find a way to actively manage those. And I think that's what we're looking at, especially as Lainey um, mentioned, with the, the population growth that we're looking at, with the number of businesses that are moving here as a result of our recreational assets, with, an, you know, at three and a half percent unemployment, we're actually looking to, uh, for a net in-migration of people, and one of the best ways that we can do that is just to maintain the, the overall high quality of our recreational assets so that it, it improves people's quality of lives. Are you finding a way to, to blend those interests too? Because backcountry skiers don't always get along with, say, helicopter skiers or resort expansion and, and so on and so forth. Uh, the, the hikers and the mountain bikers maybe have a little bit different interest. Are you finding a way to bring them together? Sure, I mean, it's gotta be through the entire Mountain Accord process, right? It's a plan, it's a process. And that's where we're trying to um, bring all these groups together to come and, and, uh, and work through the issues. I think it's the best option that we have today. We've had these issues for a long time and they've continued to escalate. And if we don't deal with it now, it's not like they're not just gonna go away, right? They're only gonna continue to increase. And, uh, and this is the best process that we have to deal with them. Now as a plan and a process, Laney, there's still a lot left to be done. I mean, some people feel, oh, there, there's the plan. It's a done deal, right? Where do you stand? Well, we, uh, like I said, we've been at this for about a year and a half, and we've included over 200 stakeholders to come up with this proposed blueprint that's out for public comment right now. It's just, it's just a concept. Mm -hmm. We threw it out there and it got the public's attention. Mm -hmm. No decisions have been made. And in fact, for many of the proposals, uh, we'll be embarking on another two years of study. So two mm -hmm. more years of public dialogue. So mm -hmm. some of these things uh, that are controversial, we have a lot more information gathering mm -hmm. to do and a lot more public input. 
So, uh, you know, it's just a concept. It got the public's attention, which is what we wanted. And uh, it's really crucial that over the next two years, we have a lot more public dialogue. Well, some of those ideas that got the public attention is what we'll be talking about when we come back. Maybe we can straighten out some myths. We'll be right back after this. There is a place where the desert comes alive, where rain breaks forth from solid stone and gardens spring from blistered rock. There is a place with enough color to make a rainbow jealous, where boulders are bigger than buildings and cliffs are higher than clouds. There is a place that will straighten your step, tighten your grip, widen your eyes, and open your jaw. There is a place. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil vale Falls. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. Color, it's something that can be seen. But have you ever wanted to reach out and touch it? experience it. In San Juan County, Utah color comes to life like nowhere else on earth. Color can be more than an abstract. Color can be your gateway to a new world. Visit San Juan County and explore the past, present, and future in a way that you've only dreamed of. San Juan County. Color. Your experience. You go through the day-to-day -day repeating what you did yesterday. Don't you wish you could access that piece of your life that's missing? Find the beauty, serenity, family fun, or anything else that's missing from your life in the Cedar City Bryan Head area. Gain access to your adventure, whether it's camping, hiking, the arts, festivals, or just a getaway. Visit cedarcityayl.com for details on all the adventures that you can access in scenic southern Utah. Welcome back once again. We're talking about the Mountain Accord, the Wasatch Mountain Accord today. And, uh, you know, parts of it have been rather controversial. There's a lot of misunderstanding about what the Mountain Accord is and what isn't. Uh, Lainey, as program manager, I know you've heard a lot about this from various groups. Let's take, for instance, uh, transportation up the canyons. I know some people around the Little Cottonwood Canyon area fear they're going to have gondolas, railroads, high-speed buses, uh, who knows what going up the canyon in the neighborhood. What, what's actually in the Mountain Accord here? Well, uh, the blueprint doesn't propose a specific mode or a specific solution. Like I said before, we have another uh, several years of study before any final decisions would be made. But what the blueprint does propose is that we can we cannot accommodate more cars in the canyons in the future. Mm -hmm. And so it's proposing to move people around in the mountains using mass transit. And that means to get from Park City in and out of the mountains, to get from the Salt Lake Valley in and out of the mountains using public transit. Year round, something that would be available in the summer for all ages and abilities, ADA accessible, mm -hmm. something that'd be a real asset into the future. So we don't know exactly what that's gonna look like today, mm -hmm. but we're asking the public, are you on board with this concept? Because it's gonna be different accessing the mountains via transit uh, as opposed to, to vehicles. Mm -hmm. And so that's the basic concept in the blueprint. So you're thinking out of the box, and it's probably still 30 years down the line before anything would actually take place. Isn't it? Actually, that is a misconception. Is so we, are, we wanna make decisions today that are gonna stand the test of time, and that 30 years from now, we're gonna be glad we did today. Yeah. We are not looking to wait 30 years to take action. We're proposing two more years to study, and then we wanna implement solutions. And uh, transportation solutions are really important to implement when you're in a period of growth so that your city grows up around your transportation. Uh, Chris, a lot of people feel or fear uh, ski link or one Wasatch or ski lifts or gondolas coming over from Summit County to uh, Salt Lake County and so on. Is this a part of the plan too? Is this what Summit County well, would like to see? It's part of what's being studied, but I, I, ski link is, is not the t term du jour. It's one Wasatch, which is 
more of instead of just two resorts connecting, it's the six resorts now working together under the banner of Ski Utah. But I think that Summit County is less concerned about over the snow connections. Uh, Park City and Summit County have been more concerned about a tunnel connection, that that would change the, the nature of our town, the character, and uh, that it may have adverse economic impacts. And it's those kinds of things that need a lot more study because if, if a vote were put today, it would probably be turned down. Uh, because, tunnel. yeah, with, for, for rail, yeah. for, for uh, light rail. The tunnel connection would be rather controversial, I can see. And, and there's also some talk of tunnels connecting Little Cottonwood Canyon to Big Cottonwood Canyon. And on well, yeah, you'd connect from the, theory, the, the part of the blueprint is it would study a rail connection from basically the, the light rail backbone or front runner backbone in, along the I-15 corridor east up, you know, 9400 south, up Little Cottonwood through to Big Cottonwood through to Park City. And it's that series of connections that need a lot more study uh, and especially for Summit County and Park City. And, uh, one, and that's just one of the options right. that is can be contemplated. Uh, we've also got bus options that are on the table. Uh, there over, the snow are over the snow options. And so there's a suite of options that we are proposing that we study moving forward. Uh, but Brad, from a recreational viewpoint, what tunnels and ski connects, where, where do you stand? So I think the recreational community is just trying to make sure that we maintain the best experience that we can, right, and, and going forward. And, and as you try to continue to put more people in those canyons, and, and I'm one of those who both skis at the resorts with my daughters as well as backcountry skis, so I see how full the parking lot gets. I see how much further away from the resort I have to park, and that also is, is no different than, uh, than at the backcountry um, parking areas. So we need to find some solutions for that, and I think the Mountain Accord process is the best way that we have today. Tunnels would have to go through an extreme environmental impact statement. And those they? were actually a best practice study from Europe, right? So that's where they came from and just trying to see if there makes sense to wrap those together. Okay. And I know you're getting a call here, Laney, <laughs> so we'll take a break. You can find out who it is that's calling and we'll get right back. Back in a moment. Canab, base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. You belong in Canab. Planning your next conference or corporate event, the Davis Conference Center offers 70,000 square feet of flexible meeting and exhibit space, plus high-tech audio-visual services that will make your event a success. Whether you're planning a training, meeting, company retreat, wedding, or large convention, let the staff at the Davis Conference Center help you arrange your next event. Located east of I-15 in Layton, call 801-416-8888 or visit davisconferencecenter.com today. Sevier County is perfect. The brand new fairgrounds facility includes a large meeting hall, breakout rooms, and a perfect kitchen facility to feed just a few or hundreds. The county also boasts the Sevier Valley Center on the campus of Snow College Richfield. This facility includes an arena and numerous breakout rooms that can be used for any type of meeting, conference, or event. When planning your next meeting or conference, consider placing it in the center of it all, Sevier County. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to take about three minutes here and try to wrap up this entire two-year process of Mountain Accord. Uh, I know there's things, thoughts you want to leave the public with, so let's start with you, Brad. On recreation, what do you want the public to realize, and how would you like them to comment on the 
Thanks, Terry. So for me, the days of being disengaged in recreation, not just along the Wasatch Front, but throughout the entire state are over. You know, we're growing so quickly. Recreation is growing so much faster than even the population that you have to be engaged in order to find a management plan that works for all of us. I, I travel throughout the state extensively. I see and I'm working on areas that have not put an active management plan in place, and it's much more difficult than putting one in place up front. And we see throughout where it's whether it's a, a river, whether it's a mountain bike trail, um, or or some of the national parks where we've had to um, deeply engage and, and put these plans in place. And this is no different. The entire state depends so much on recreation, doesn't it? So Chris, what would you want your constituents in Park City and Summit County to know and to say about the Wasatch Mountain Accord? Well, Terry, I think the most important takeaway is that the do nothing option is a decision in and, of, in and of itself and has, I think, dire consequences. In other words, if we just let things go in the status quo. And so what's great about Mountain Accord is it's a chance to bring together really the whole state, anybody in the state that's interested in this piece of real estate in the project area, and to work together to, f to try to find the common ground where it can be a win-win for both. And I just want to encourage everyone to stay at the table and let the process work its way through and to try to find that. And we've extended our public input period to May 1, and we're going to continue to receive public comment at any time, but we just need to keep working through the process until we can find a an equilibrium or a balance that works for everyone. Now, you've got so many players in this, uh, Laney, uh, you know, from the cities, the counties, to save our canyons, the ski resorts, the government, e everybody. But it seems like maybe the most important at this point is the general public. You actually are going to listen to public comment. We actually are, yes. And in fact, to date, the public comment has been shaping what we've been doing to date, and it's going to pay play a huge role in what we do over the next couple of years in terms of making real decisions. So we have a public input period that's going to end on May 1st. Mm -hmm. We would like all of your listeners to hop on our website. You can take a short survey at mountainaccord.com. You can submit a comment at comment at mountainaccord.com. The kinds of things we're looking for are, are we on the right track? Do we need to do something or would you rather we did nothing? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to embark on a two year, very intense process to answer some of these long standing conflicts in the canyons? Cause it's not going to be easy. So that's the kind of feedback we're seeking right now. Of course, we've got a lot more study to look at tunnels and modes of transportation and we'll be soliciting more feedback on that in the future. And all these comments will be read and listened to. Okay, there's your chance, your chance to have a say about the future of the Wasatch Mountains, something that's important to all of us. Thank you for joining us today on The County Seat. I'm Terry Wood. Here's some advice. When visiting Bryce Canyon Country, take your time. If you like this video, then we invite you to subscribe to our channel, The County Seat. You can do that here. And we invite you to share with your friends. We also invite you to get all the latest up-to-date information by following us on our social media channels. And if all else fails, make sure that you watch the county seat Sunday morning at 8.30 right here on ABC4.